One, two, three. And welcome to Art This. Excited to be back, John. How are you? I'm very well. Thank you, Stephen. How are you doing? I am doing well. I am very excited because behind us we have a wonderful painting. Tell the people what's going on. Yes. Today. Well, this is the show about the work that makes art work. And we have Dr. Wayne Willis, who is a painter and illustrator, and he's actually published a book back in 2000. So he's a very talented man. He's going to talk to us about his technique and how he does what he does, share us a little bit of the tips that he shares with his students when he's teaching art. That's where we're headed today on Art This. We'll be right back. You're watching Art This, the show about the work that makes art work, and we are thrilled to have Dr. Wayne Willis with us here. But folks out in Fleming County, Kentucky, they just know him as Wayne. They don't know that he was a professor and an administrator here in the education area. He loves teaching about the history and philosophy of education. But since he's semi-retired as a professor, he's heading toward full-time artistry, as a teacher and producer. He works on large-scale watercolors, some acrylics, buildings and figures, and we'll see today as we talk about how he makes the artworks that he does, that he integrates photography in an interesting way. Wayne Willis, welcome to the show. Well, I'm glad to be here again. Fantastic. It's been about four or five years, we think, since we did a feature on you, and ever since we did that, we thought we've got to have him back and talk about how it is that he does what he does. <laughs> and so he's going to show us today, ladies and gentlemen, while we talk, how he brings together a watercolor. Now, I see that you have a, a photograph that you're using as a reference, mm -hmm. it looks like, but you're not exactly copying the photo. How would you describe this translation or this transition that you're doing? Well, um I, you know, identify the parts of the image that I consider most interesting and most important, and the ones that just kind of speak to me. And uh, I generally stay fairly close to the photographs so that um, um, the locations tend to be recognizable. I know a lot of artists, the, the subject matter is just the loosest reference for what they do, and they don't have any expectation of it even being recognizable mm -hmm. when they get done. Um, Edward Hopper is one of my favorite painters, and he has a very famous painting of a, of a cafe, a, this, a diner, these folks in there. And presumably it was near Greenwich, somewhere in Greenwich Village where he lived, but nobody's ever been able to find a place that looked like that. Mm -hmm. and so they don't really know. He, and he would just go out and sketch mm -hmm. and go back to his studio and paint, and what he ended up with might not look like what he started with. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to stick a lot closer with my subjects than that, mm -hmm. and I'm not always sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. Yeah. But, but I did start out as a photographer, so there's a part of me that feels like this is just an extension mm -hmm. of the photography. Do you usually work off of your own photographs? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. It would be very rare for me to work off anybody else's photographs. Mm -hmm. I do a lot. I'm doing more and more, though, painting from life, sketching, going out on the street, painting wherever, keeping sketchbooks of where I, Shoney's or Fuzzy Duck or wherever mm -hmm. I happen to be sketching what's going on. More had landmarks for you folks watching overseas, just keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I look at other painters, some of the great, the great masters, and there's a photographic quality, say, to Da Vinci. Right. Uh, even superior to a photograph. Yeah. It's like it was HD before HD. Right. And, and that's, that's not what you're doing. You're no. not reproducing the photo. And I get this feeling that you are adding almost an expressionistic layer. I would hope Is so. That in, yeah, you're doing that on purpose? Yeah, that's absolutely. Strategic. I mean, some people think it's a great compliment to say, oh, that looks like a photograph. I started out as a photographer. I'm not, I don't want to spend 100 hours on a painting to accomplish something I could have accomplished in a hundredth of a second yes. with a camera. And so I'm not interested in photographs. If I want photographs, I take photographs. Yeah. Would it be a compliment for you if someone looked at one of your photographs and said, that looks like a painting? <laughs> 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 Probably <laughs> not. Like, no, no, well, no, it was no, out of focus. Yeah. You know, or the car hit a bump. Well, one of the things that I noticed, um, at maybe, and, and I wanted to verify with you and see if my impression is correct, that when I looked at the, the wonderful gallery of your work that's on your Facebook page, and I encourage people to check that out, is that there, there's something about the composition of a photo that is 
almost by nature different than the composition of a painting, in that, in that the painting, therefore, has a... Like, for example, one of the paintings is a view, I think, walking away behind <laughs> Ginger Hall. Yeah, yeah. And I don't think a painter might normally be inspired by that, yeah. but the photo and the painting that results are really great. And there's movement, and there's a little bit of drama, and there's, there's environment, and the sun, and the shadows, and the colors are beautiful. But the subject's walking away. <laughs> uh, does starting and working with photos lead you places you might not go if you started with a sketch or with a paintbrush? Well, I don't know. I don't know. In that particular image, the, the figure was not in the photo. There was no figure there. Mm -hmm. I wanted there to be a figure there. So you painted yourself walking well, away. Well, and I did not intend it to be me. It, I, it I actually, looks like you, though. It is me. But it, <laughs> uh, I, um, I was looking for a model, and I was just on the web looking through images to something of a figure I could sort of use as a model. And I could never find anything I wanted. And so finally I just got out in the driveway and walked down the driveway and had my wife take my picture mm -hmm. as I was walking away. And then I used that with no intention of it actually looking like me. Mm -hmm. If you had said, paint a picture of yourself from behind that people will recognize as you, I would have said that would not be really likely. Right. And <laughs> but everybody who looks at it knows that's me. That's and I right. Yeah. And I'm, I'm thinking that is a, a, a photographic painting, but not in the way of the normal clarity and technical properties. Right, There's just right. something about it, the sort of picture that one might take even, even in a journalistic way. Yeah. But when you do your expressionistic treatment of it, it's a really interesting composition that I, I wondered if it would normally occur to a painter without yeah, that kind I, of inspiration. I, yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Now, when you're teaching, uh, what are some of the things that you say to novices or to people who are moving, say, into watercolor from another medium? This is some helpful tips, you know, for getting through the inevitable bumps and barriers. Well, I think one of the biggest issues, especially for beginners, but for a lot of, of art students, is they have a false notion of what painting is like from watching people like Bob Ross. Mm -hmm. And he creates the impression that you sit down and you paint in 30 minutes, you have a complete painting, and it's lovely. And that's not really how painting works. You, you, most painters go through, any individual painting goes through lots of stages. And so a painting that might end up being great is some of the stages in that process are going to look pretty terrible. Mm -hmm. Art students get to that terrible stage and go, oh, it's terrible, I want to quit. I said, no, no, this is just one of the stages. You just keep going with this, it, it'll eventually get there. Mm -hmm. But that impatience from a perfectionism that says, in 30 minutes it ought to be pretty. Mm -hmm. And you know, I mentioned a while ago painting for, uh, painting for 100 hours. I have done paintings that I spent 100 hours on. And it's not uncommon to spend 20 or 30 or 40 hours on a painting. Mm -hmm. And so that's a very different process from what you see on 30 minutes on public TV on Saturday morning mm -hmm. or whatever. So. Mm -hmm. Before we wrap up, I have one more question for you, then I'd like to give you a gift for coming on. But I noticed in uh, the, the gallery that you've put up on Facebook that there are a lot of portraits. Mm -hmm. There are some scenes, some nature. And then there are scenes that are just filled with movement, like the, the, the horse race, mm -hmm. the, the pictures of the horse racing that you have, where I'm even seeing consideration of the detail of the angle of the heads of the jockeys. And it reminded me of this, the cave paintings <laughs> where we see motion, yeah. almost a stop frame element to it. Are you, do you hear the scene? Do you, do you remember when you shot the picture to get to recapture that drama? Because it's there and it's magnificent. Well, I, when I, I went to Keeneland and shot 400 pictures one day. Mm -hmm. And part of the idea is I know that these are going to end up as paintings, but also I want them to be good photographs. And so I start out trying to make a great photograph, mm -hmm. figuring that if I get a great photograph, then I will have lots of material to work with either way. And, and that, those are particular paintings where accuracy was very important to me. And so there are elements of them that are extremely accurate, and there are other aspects of it that are fuzzy and... Yes. and hopefully calling your attention to the right thing. Yes, so. and I, if there really isn't a better way, and I'm glad that you did it, because I couldn't figure out how to do it, to put the unique and compelling and engaging quality of your work is that there's this technical accuracy that really grabs hard onto the real world, but there's this layer of impressionism and feel and, and fullness 
that a, a, a photo just could not achieve. And so I really, really enjoy your work. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right. Before you go, uh, I would like to give you a gift on behalf well, of please. our program. <laughs> we are sponsored by Lee Oscar Harmonicas, and he has provided for us signed, engraved cool. Lee Oscar Harmonicas. Thank you, Wayne Well, Willis. thank you very much. I will play it this very day. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks a lot for coming on. I appreciate it. And good luck to you. Thank you. All right. That's Dr. Wayne Willis, artist extraordinaire here on Art This. I'll be right back with Stephen to talk about next month's show. And welcome back. How about Wayne Willis? I am so glad we had him right. on. You know, I've known Wayne for a long time, John. I've known him as an educator. I've known him in the classroom. But uh, really surprised by what we learned today with his artwork. Yes, and people need to know he is a teacher. So if you're interested in studying privately or over at the Round County Arts Center with Wayne Willis, you might want to check him out. Mm -hmm. Go to his Facebook page, which can be found at Wayne Willis Facebook. So check out the fabulous gallery there and the contact info and keep track of him. He's not done. He, no, he was had right. a full career as an educator, right. and now he's doing art and still studying. That's right. So he's an inspiration to us, and sure. we thank Wayne for coming on. What's happening next program, Very Stephen? excited next program. We are going to have Moorhead State University actors here from the theater program doing some scenes talking about Page to the Stage. Outstanding. Looking mm -hmm. forward to that. That's late April, mm -hmm. so watch for us, folks. We better jam our way Let's out of here. Ready? One, two, three. Ah!